Hello, this is O Drama Recaps. Today, we'll be discussing a 2011 French biographical comedy drama film called The Untouchables. Beware of spoilers. Proceed with caution and take care. On a late night in Paris, Driss is driving his boss Philippe through the bustling city streets. Tired of waiting in traffic, Driss speeds up and starts weaving through cars, ignoring traffic signals. This reckless driving catches the attention of the police, who begin chasing them. Driss, unfazed, bets 100 euros that he can escape from the cops. Despite his best efforts, the police eventually corner them. Now, Driss doubles the bet to 200 euros, promising to get them a police escort. He gets out of the car and pretends to be offended, explaining to the officers that Philippe is paralyzed and needs to be rushed to the hospital. The cops find evidence of this when they see the wheelchair in the trunk and witness Philippe pretending to convulse. Moved by the supposed emergency, they forgive Driss and even offer to escort them to the hospital. Upon arriving, Driss celebrates their escape by playing September by Earth, Wind and Fire. He shares a cigarette with Philippe and they drive away just before the hospital staff can approach them. This unique friendship started several months earlier. Philippe and his assistant Magali are conducting interviews for a new caretaker, but the candidates have been uninspiring. That is until Driss barges in, disregarding the interview process, and demands that they sign documents to confirm he was rejected. He needs the paperwork to claim unemployment benefits. Despite his brashness, Philippe is intrigued by Driss and asks him to return the next day. Driss goes home to his modest apartment, where he struggles to find peace among his many younger siblings. His older sister, Mina, helps keep things under control. When Driss notices his brother Adama getting out of a suspicious car, he becomes concerned. Adama claims he was at school but leaves the apartment shortly after, making Driss even more suspicious. Later that evening, their mother returns home. Driss gives her a stolen Faberge egg as a gift and claims he was on vacation. She is not pleased with his sudden appearance after a six-month absence and scolds him for treating her home like a hotel. Having had enough of his dishonesty and considering the needs of her other children, Driss's mother kicks him out of the house and tells him not to return. That night, Driss hangs out with some friends from the neighborhood. The following day, Driss returns to Philippe's mansion to collect his papers. Yvonne, the housekeeper, gives him a tour of the luxurious home, showing him Philippe's daily routine and the room and private bathroom he would have if he accepted the job. Driss is fascinated by the bathtub, but his attention is diverted when Philippe offers him the signed document and a job opportunity. Driss agrees to a one-month trial, and Philippe bets he won't last two weeks. After settling in, Driss learns how to care for Philippe, including leg stimulation, transferring him to his wheelchair, and assisting with showering and dressing. Although initially uncomfortable with some tasks like putting on stockings and cleaning Philippe after using the bathroom, Driss eventually accepts them as part of his duties. One evening, while enjoying a snack on the rooftop, Driss encounters Philippe's daughter Elisa and her boyfriend Bastian seeking a private spot to make out. Driss quickly adapts to his new routine with Philippe, learning from his initial mistakes like handing Philippe the phone instead of placing it on his ear or forgetting the baby monitor while taking a bath. He also organizes Philippe's mail into different folders. Though most letters are opened by Driss, there are a few private ones he's not allowed to read. Upon discovering a flyer for female escorts, Driss decides to create a separate folder for such materials instead of discarding them as Philippe suggests. One morning, Yvonne scolds Driss for being late and, while in his room, discovers dangerous weapons in his bag. Driss's task for the day is to drive Philippe around but he refuses to transport him in the back of a van like cargo. Instead, he opts for one of the luxury cars that are rarely used. Initially hesitant, Philippe soon warms up to the idea of a more thrilling ride, although Yvonne disapproves. As they attempt to leave the building, Driss confronts a neighbor parked in front of their entrance, ignoring that no parking sign. He physically threatens the man until he moves his car. While Philippe is impressed, Yvonne disapproves yet again. The duo visits a museum, where Philippe plans to buy an expensive artwork that Driss deems unworthy due to its simplistic appearance. 
Later, Philippe meets with a relative who expresses concern about Drissa's violent tendencies and criminal past. However, Philippe values Drissa's lack of pity and humor. After another unsuccessful attempt to flirt with Magali, Driss has dinner with Yvonne, who turns off the baby monitor to explain that Philippe's private letters are from a pen pal named Eleanor. Although they've never met in person, their connection is deep. Driss then teases Yvonne about the gardener's obvious interest in her before heading to bed. Awoken by strange noises on the baby monitor, Driss finds Philippe struggling to breathe. Unable to ignore his distress, Driss helps Philippe through the attack with comforting words and a damp cloth. Once Philippe falls asleep and then wakes up again needing air, Driss immediately takes him outside for a nighttime stroll by the river. As they enjoy the Parisian night, Philippe admits that his medication can only do so much and he sometimes experiences phantom pain. As they observe some girls walking by, Philippe admits that his condition prevents him from physically pleasing a woman, but he still finds satisfaction in having his ears massaged due to their sensitivity. When Philippe's phantom pain threatens to return, Driss shares a joint with him. Initially skeptical, Philippe ends up enjoying it. Later, at a restaurant, they share a meal and jokes, and Philippe reveals more about his past. He met his wife as a student, and after marrying, she experienced five miscarriages and was diagnosed with a terminal illness. That's when they adopted Elisa. Philippe has always loved competition, extreme sports, and speed, which led to the paragliding accident that broke his vertebrae. However, he believes that living without his wife is his true handicap. Realizing that Driss has completed his one-month trial, Philippe officially hires him, but asks him to return the stolen Faberjag, which was a gift from his wife. She gave him one each year, and he has 25, symbolizing their time together. The next day, Driss talks to Mina, who is upset because he hasn't responded to her messages, except to ask her to look for the egg. She also mentions police officers have been calling their home. Later, Driss visits Adama, who admits he was caught with 30 grams of drugs. Driss tries to take him to lunch, but Adama declines and enters the same suspicious car from before. When Driss listens in as Philippe dictates his letter to Eleanor, he finds the flowery language dull and suggests Philippe be more direct. Surprised to learn that they've been corresponding for six months without exchanging photos, Driss seizes the opportunity when he discovers Eleanor's phone number on one of the letters. He calls her, prompting Philippe to finally speak to her beyond their written correspondence. Philippe and Eleanor's conversation goes so well that they often talk on the phone, even just before Philippe and Driss attend the opera. There, Driss laughs and pokes fun at the costumes. The following day, Driss persuades Philippe to exchange photos with Eleanor, selecting one of Philippe in his wheelchair. Later, while Driss is painting, Elisa interrupts him to ask for cigarettes and mocks his artistic attempts. Annoyed, Driss kicks her out and goes to see Philippe, who is asking Yvonne to swap the chosen photo with one of him before his accident. She hides the photo in the escort file just as Driss enters, complaining about Elisa and suggesting Philippe discipline her, which Yvonne agrees with. As the days pass, Philippe and Driss' friendship deepens. They enjoy various activities together, such as playing in the snow, going for runs, dressing up in suits, and sharing joints. When Driss completes his first painting, he shows it to Magali, who slaps him when he tries to kiss her. Philippe, however, appreciates the painting and promises to try selling it. The pair continues to have a great time, including purchasing a faster car and hiring escorts together. When Philippe's birthday arrives, he isn't thrilled about the annual party, where he pretends to be surprised and meets relatives who only visit to ensure he's still alive. He expects the event to be dull. While guests enjoy live classical music at the party, Driss finds Elisa crying in her room after taking some of Yvonne's pills, which failed to kill her as she had hoped. Upset because her boyfriend Bastian broke up with her and insulted her, Elisa asks Driss to speak with him. Driss agrees, but for a price. Meanwhile, Philippe shows Driss painting to a relative and convinces him to buy it for 11,000 euros. Driss returns to the dining room and chats with Yvonne, who reveals that Magali is in a rocky relationship with a man named Fred, giving Driss hope. As the party winds down, Philippe shares some of the most significant classical music pieces with Driss, who responds with humor. 
After the band finishes, Driss plays Boogie Wonderland by Earth, Wind and Fire, and begins dancing impressively in the center of the room. He manages to persuade the other guests to join him, and Philippe enjoys watching the spectacle. Later, when putting Philippe to bed, Driss opens Eleanor's latest letter. She has sent a picture of herself, showing she is quite attractive, and suggests they meet when she visits Paris the following week. On the day of the date, Yvonne and Driss help Philippe choose the perfect outfit. With Yvonne accompanying Philippe to the date, Driss uses his day off to confront Bastien, threatening him until he agrees to apologize to Eliza and bring her croissants daily. Driss also instructs Bastien to fix his hair. Afterward, Driss visits his mother at work, observing her from a distance. At the restaurant, Yvonne and Philippe wait for Eleanor, who is significantly late. After waiting an hour, Philippe gives up, calls Driss to pick him up, and leaves the restaurant, not noticing Eleanor's arrival. That night, Philippe takes Driss on his private plane and gives him the money from the painting sale, making Driss incredibly happy. The next morning, they arrive in the countryside, where Philippe decides to go paragliding and brings Driss along. Although initially reluctant, Driss ends up enjoying the experience. Upon returning home, they find Adama waiting for Driss, who scolds him for the scars on his face. Adama remains tight-lipped about his situation, so Driss has him wait in his room while he calls Mina to reassure her and puts Philippe to bed. However, Philippe isn't ready for sleep yet. After discussing a painting together, Philippe asks Driss about his family. Initially reluctant, Driss eventually shares that Adama isn't his biological brother and that his parents are actually his aunt and uncle. Driss's family brought him from Senegal when he was eight because they couldn't have children, and his real name is Bakari Basari. However, since other kids had that name, they called him Idris, which eventually became Driss. Eventually, his aunt miraculously conceived, and after his uncle's death, more men and children joined the family. Taking Philippe's advice about Adama needing discipline, Philippe fires Driss so he can be with his family instead of caring for an old man his whole life. The next morning, after Bastien delivers his daily croissant with an improved hairstyle, Driss packs his bags and prepares to leave. He says goodbye to Magali, who introduces him to her significant other, Frédéric, revealing that Magali isn't interested in men. Driss gives up pursuing her immediately. As Driss leaves the house, he returns the baby monitor to Yvonne, teasing her for lying to him about Magali just to mess with him. Yvonne hands him the escort file he started, and he's disappointed to find the photo he chose hidden there. He discards the file but keeps the photo. Outside, Driss confronts a car blocking the entrance, insisting they move despite not working there anymore. Adama supports him, saying it's a matter of principle. Later, Driss and Adama pick up their mother at the station, while Philippe has his first dinner with his new, dull caretaker. He leaves the meal uneaten, and no one is there to scold him. Driss returns to his old life, reconnecting with friends and protecting Adama from the suspicious car's occupants. He lands a job as a driver after impressing an employer with his pragmatic approach and art knowledge gained while working for Philippe. Meanwhile, Philippe dislikes his new caretaker and remains in a bad mood. One night, refusing help from anyone in the house for his phantom pain, Yvonne calls Driss. This leads to the opening scene, where police chase and later escort them to the hospital. Afterward, Driss drives Philippe to the coast, where the sight of the sea calms him. Later, Driss trims Philippe's overgrown beard and takes him to a restaurant for lunch. Wishing him luck and returning the stolen egg, Driss departs, leaving Philippe worried until he sees his date, Eleanor, who is thrilled to see him and doesn't mind the wheelchair. The real Count Philippe Pozo di Borgo now lives in Morocco, remarried, and has two daughters. The real Driss, named Abdul Yasmin Selou, owns a firm, is married, and has three children. The two men remain close friends to this day.